All right, yo, what's going on, everybody? My name is Colonies, and welcome back to the Loft Podcast. You guys have been on my ass about this one. It has been on a little bit of a hiatus for multiple different reasons, combination of being busy at tournaments, being lazy, waiting for guests, guests not working out, things like that. But here we are today. What are you doing? Shut up. We have the one and only Keitaro Time. Boo. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? We have... Cosmos, Ooh. and we have Sylvanas, the people's champ, the people's champ, undeserved. We do not have Hakuru today, unfortunately, he's being corny and going and surprising his girlfriend in Mexico. It's not his girlfriend. His friend. Future girlfriend, whatever. His friend that's a girl. Anyways, uh, yeah, so we're missing Sylvanas, or er, Hakuru today, but you know, it's all good, because uh, we have the people that matter here today. Yeah. Alright, so what we talk about? All right, so I think our first topic should be probably the Smash World Tour. It's the best, the biggest, best news to come out of the Smash community in a hot minute. I think most people in the community are very excited about it. And uh, I'm just curious. I, I think we should start with Cosmos as a top player uh, who actually has a chance of being in this thing. Wait a minute, what you saying? I think I have a really good chance of getting no, to no, 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 When was the last no, time no, you went to a tournament? You <laughs> yeah, right, right. zero chance, yeah. sorry. Damn. Jeez. All right, but fight my Broly. All right, All right. go ahead. He has a chance of making some of the money. We don't know the payouts yet. Are you at, yeah, we do it. know the payouts. Wait, what's the payouts? It's, it's top 32 get paid out. Wait, what does 32 get? 32, 32 gets, gets 500. 500, yeah. Oh, that's So funny. eight players get 500 each. It's not trash. If, if you qualify, you, if you get literally qualify, you get $500 for free. If you bust your fucking ass. That's how much I, I, I got for the Wi-Fi tournament. That's how much fit okay. that Evo got, by Imagine, the way. imagine, let's, let's name a player. Let's say Sylvanas tried his ass off, and he qualified. And after he qualified, he had to fight Cola. He gets 3 0 by a crack addict player. Right. All right. Not actually, but... <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. No, he's, not, he's not a crack addict. He just plays, like, literally insane Cola. Probably okay. Cola. Yeah. And he gets 32nd place. And after all that traveling, he gets $500. First of all, he gets 25th. Second of all, yes, he gets five hundred dollars, and also but on top of that, he he gets the winnings that he got for qualifying from those tournaments, and also the notoriety of being in the biggest tournament. That it'll probably be one of the biggest deals in Smash history. I mean, that, real, that realistically, tournament. like the thirty-two, no one's, no one's gonna remember in like twenty-fifth place, bro. Like, I don't that, agree. Let's be that honest. Let's be honest. I don't. This, that, I don't honestly, if, if I got twenty-fifth place, people would. Honestly, I don't think that people won't remember if you got if you get top thirty two at the first circuit finals in melee or ultimate. I think that's a pretty big deal. Like you're gonna be on the map as like a top player. Wait, wait, wait. This is a last chance qualifier. Yeah. How many people join in? One. So it's thirty one. Thirty one enter from the standings, mm-hmm. and then one person gets in from last chance qualifier. Unless you're a top player that's already probably gonna make it in, or you're really really good, but you're like on the verge. That I just I, I want to try. Yeah. How, how inspirational of you that was deep dude bro. I'm gonna fight my ass off I'm gonna go to every tournament and get like like cause that's the thing you're saying the winnings that he got to qualify like for someone like me or him we're not really gonna get winnings from those tournaments at all we're probably gonna get 17 and get a bunch of 7 teams well not if you go to a bunch of silvers points. your top 6 silver event placings all count and silver events can be anybody can apply to have their event be a silver event there's three different tiers of silver. There's like 128 entrant plus, 64 entrant plus, 32 entrant plus. Yo, I need Kent Combo to be a silver. Uh, so, all right. So, how do you feel about it, Cosmo? Since you the one that can actually get some money. Damn. I mean, I, I mean, Colonies can you know like like he be putting in that work. I'm gonna try. He be watching Toast. He I mean, be studying Toast, bro. You know, I'm a big fan of, of Toast. Yeah, you know, he's I'm a, a huge fan. Of toast. He be using well, my training mode mod pack. Colonies, I hope you win that five hundred dollars. I hope I do too. I would be more than happy to bro, because like, for you, me, you could also get seventeenth and get eight hundred dollars. I could also like just make it there and be really happy that I made it there, and I don't really care about the five hundred, but it's a nice perk of being there. But you know how much you lose to get there. I I, I would hate to like <laughs> me me personally. I would feel like shit to make it in and then go like 03 or, or 04 in the round robin. Well, that is important to note too, is like mm-hmm. nobody who gets in there is planning on getting that 25th. 
So it's like the 500 is just a nice little consolation prize. But like mm. nobody's gunning. I don't think anyone would be disappointed to get 500 for 25th. I think they would be more disappointed that they got 25th. You know what I mean? All I know is there was a Jigs player named Soft. He qualified for something. He busted his ass. It might have been MLG four, six years ago. And he six barely got years in. Ago. Yeah, it was something for Melee. He barely got in. And then after he got in, he got bodied. And that was his legacy. And I never saw him again. I mean, that's, that's kind of like. It kind of reminds me of how, like, like I want to, like, like he's my friend, but, like, you know, our thing, like, busted, busted his ass to get into Summit. Like, his friend. And he had good places. Yeah. He had good wins. Yeah, he, 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 he did a lot of big house, and then he, he didn't take a game. The last thing, oh, I, last I, thing mean, I remember is that he lost to Hungry Bucks, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, it's like, everybody, for me, it's like, I don't know, it's weird. As someone who, like, aspires to get into the top 32 or whatever it's like i if i did go to get into that event and then i got bodied i wouldn't like view that as like the end of my run yeah like i wouldn't be like oh yeah well it was a good career you know i put it all on the line for this one tournament like (laughs) it's not like some college it wouldn't be some anime shit where i'm like i'm going to the martial arts tournament in dragon ball z or whatever like this happens once a year like i'd just be like well shit it's another tournament. I'm just going to get better, work harder. That's all you got to do. I think the biggest things to take away from the Smash World Tour is that I think it's good because it's something that everybody's been wanting for a long time. Yes. It's, everybody's complaining about money, and we're seeing money in the Smash community. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, actually, sorry to interrupt, but this is actually really important to note, is that they're going to have crowdfunding for the pot, too. So it's very likely that you'll see 25th not get $400. I'm sure you'll probably get... Like $600. $600. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, if you get 25th at a tournament, get $600 in any fighting game. That's good as fuck. That is technically... Bro, that's how much I got for that Wi-Fi tournament, and I'd rather have not entered. That one tournament. Yes, that one tournament. All right, can we? All right, let's all be real. All right, we're all in the Smash community. So if I right? went to like a billion tournaments, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's be let's be real. Let's be real for a second though. We are all in the Smash community. Have been for years. If you are playing a game for fucking money, you're in the wrong community, and we all know that. That is true. We all know that. If you're competing but for money. We don't. We that, don't. That is true, but we can still talk about how it sucks. I agree. I agree. Because it sucks. But it's like. I don't know. I I think that this is a really good first step. I think it's great for the community. I'm happy they're doing more. They said for the first year. I was like, whoa! The first year? Whoa! That that got me real hyped. Sorry, I was really loud. Um, But, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good thing in the long run. And potentially if they get sponsors into it for the future, then, you know, hopefully not Nintendo because they'll fuck everything up. So, no Nintendo, please! I hope Nintendo is sponsors for sure. I hope they don't. Dude, I feel if like they, they'd fuck it up. They, they do something wrong. Dude, they, Why, how they could they fuck it up? They're not going to hire Keitaro. Keitaro's not a Nintendo company. Well, it's not going to be run by Nintendo. Nintendo. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. They're oh, just, okay, if they okay. just sponsor it and, like... <laughs> I think, like, this is a... As the people who ran Smash World Tour, are, like, on the website say or whatever, it's like, they think one of the main reasons they want to do this is they want to kind of give that... Create that infrastructure for Nintendo to be able to hop in and support mm. if they want without having to, like do it themselves and you know maybe look too much like they don't support the casual community or whatever bullshit whatever like, right i just feel like they're just gonna have like splatoon n- ads nintendo no what the fuck no i just feel like they're just gonna have like like they're they're gonna make the infrastructure and then nintendo's gonna like come and be like yo we saw you were doing this circuit i want to like like i want in on this but we'll only get in if you, you know, have Smash Meter and, and that Smart Bomb. But they've game. never done that with any tournament that they've been a part of. Right, yeah, and they live tweet really our like, tournaments, and they have people showing up at the tournaments. But then what do they do for the tournament? They do, they, I mean, the publicity that we get from them sponsoring a tournament, I get at this point it's a meme, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, I really do think that there is value to Nintendo sponsoring an event. Not for Melee. I think for Melee it sucks because it's, like, they're not allowed to use UCF. And they're not allowed to use things that they're so accustomed to now. But for Ultimate, I do think it is like nice to have that supported Nintendo on Twitter, to have them live tweeting the events, to have them like remember the demos at at Big House and shit like that in Smash Four. That was really nice for the community. Mm-hmm. The line of fifty people that I didn't join. 
Well, that's because you're a prima donna, but if anyways. If Nintendo was smart, they would have the world tour and then have a casual tournament on the side like Alpha Red did. That, I agree with that. And then if you enter the competitive tournament, you can't enter the casual tournament. Oh. I don't know about that one. I feel like that's that's the only way you keep the com- casual and competitive separate because it's like, okay, here's the casuals and here's the competitors. Yeah. But then at that point, that should help Nintendo realize that casuals don't want tournaments because that's literally, if you make a tournament for casuals, they're not casuals because they're competing. Yeah. So it's really just... <laughs> I think like the... like I think what I what I saw from Frostbite when the Alpha Rad side event, because I saw that too and it was actually fun as fuck to watch. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was pretty dope and... It made me realize that, like, if Nintendo did step into a circuit-like environment and they wanted, like... Nice. You, that you was, nailed that. I that tried was, so hard. You nailed that. Anyways, if they wanted fucking Mars and Nairo to play a casual ex- exhibition in the middle of the tournament or something, that could be something very entertaining. It wouldn't have to, like, be the main gimmick or whatever, but they could still show, like, hey, like, you just play the game like this. Here back to the tournament, but like mm-hmm. I think that could work in a in a realistic sense. You know what? I I would support Nintendo doing casual tournaments if they did Super Smash Down. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Super, I want Smash Super Smash Down. Down. <laughs> like it's the only casual thing that I really actually am like because everything happens like this: boom, boom, boom. Like I like that. But if I just see pokeballs and items and ten stocks, I'm like, dude, what is going on? It was entertaining to watch. Like. I've always said this. I always think competitive or casual Smash is extremely fun with people who are really good at the game. Because casual Smash sucks with people that don't know how to play Smash. It's but not it, fun. Well, it still does competitive Smash. I mean, that's true. <laughs> but that, that's just, I guess that's the reality of yeah. it. I have a Being question. a good player eventually, yeah. So, for the third year in a row, Don't Park on the Grass is getting fucking chopped. It's the same day as the World Finals. Damn, really? Yes, dude. Oh my god. Well, like the World Finals, only 32 people can go. It's it's a it's what? a what? four day tournament. I mean, the yeah, stream the is stream. the biggest. Yeah, is the biggest thing. Mm. That's actually crazy because so, so that also means that what was VG it last not year? Not stream it because because VG streamed it last year. Did they? Or I guess last last year, like the year okay. that, that Ultimate came out. All right, I VG remember streamed. what 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 has happened to this tournament in the past? Did I re- they even do it last year? Um, yeah, they did. Don't park on the grass. It almost was, got like canceled or something, right? Or something. It was the same day as uh, I don't know Shine? if it was, it was something. It's in huge. December. December. I remember something. that too. I remember like, it being some tournaments. Yeah. It oh like, yeah. It was like I don't know. Man. Like, it was like, huge. a couple months ago. Um, like every December. Don't park on the grass I, was the first like major yeah, of I, Ultimate. I, right? I know the first. So they didn't get fucked then. The the like when Ultimate just came out, it was the same day as Sky's Invitational. Oh yeah. yeah so okay. he got chopped up by so that. MVD grand finals. But like it, it didn't even because it was like that well. that invitational was only Saturday and that tournament's main day yeah. was Sunday. Oh yeah, it, no, so it, it did, did amazing. Yeah. I remember watching it. It, it was crazy. Great. Yeah. But I don't even remember it happening like last December. Alright, well Before, here's a two GG yeah. I think bodied it. Some, they got mad. some shit I remember I remember there being a controversy about that but here's a question speaking of a little bit of controversy or or competition rather in the in the tournament scene we have the topic of VGBC versus BTS smash and kind of this power struggle right now we see for like who's gonna be like the big player in streaming smash tournaments so I think in the last year we saw BTS smash really start making like a lot of like power plays they got big house they got shine they got Summit, which is obviously huge now, and uh, supporting both communities. So it looked like BTS was really making strides in their Genesis? support. Genesis was huge. Yeah, that's I mean that's the biggest like homegrown Smash tournament there is. And so now VGBC, because for me I was like, damn, I'm like VGBC is like letting this shit slip. Like maybe they just don't care because their YouTube is doing so good. And it made me really sad because I think it's very important for VGBC to be a huge part of the community. I mean, they're, they're just people don't really realize this, but for casual eyes, they anybody who's somewhat interested in competitive Smash follows VG Bootcamp on Twitch, thousand percent. And when you have a tournament and you have eighty thousand viewers and they go to their follow page, it's gonna be the first thing they see every single time. That's a huge deal. As someone who's just a casual viewer of Twitch, that's how I see like that's how I see League of Legends, and that's how I see like if League of Legends all of a sudden was on. Riot Games too, I wouldn't see it. 
Like I wouldn't know to click that shit probably. Oh yeah, that's true. That's a really huge deal. And I'm very excited to see VGBC step back up to like being kind of like the Kings of Smash again. But they, you know, no big house on the circuit. I think it's crazy. Oh really? No big, cause it was BTS. No big house, no shine. Those are like two super major S tiers that are not going to be on the Smash World Tour circuit. So big house, especially. Yeah, big oh, house I, hurts. That, I'm definitely probably just not going to big house then because I I don't like that event anyways. Honestly, I did I not like that. that. <laughs> then, this is gonna be a good reason not to go to big house. You know dude. what sucks, man? Did you guys did you guys used to like it though? Because never, no, I never no, liked no. it. Oh really? Okay, no. maybe it was just because it was Actually, one of my the, first majors. The very first. Yeah, like, you. Me, first I remember you were. I remember. One, yeah, the one in the hotel. Yeah, yeah, that one. I love okay. those tournaments. Yes. Okay, where frostbite used to be. Yes. Okay, that was. Moderately, that was kind of fun. Yeah, but I then, love that. They went to the other place where you have to cross the street. Oh my god! Blistering cold, and your hotel might be blocks away. And that big it's, ass open dude, it's garage. The, yeah. And then yeah. it's like in a fucking 30, garage. Dude. Yeah. it's thirty dollars parking a night. It's like the only tournament where I feel like I'm like, oh my god, I have to go to the venue. Like, fuck. Dude, it's, you, me, Light, and Cosmos were like hotel warriors. Last big house, I remember that yeah. we were. Ch- Big chilling in there. Did not go outside. Well, the only thing I'll say about the VGBC DB uh, versus BTS S mm-hmm. is that uh, I don't know much about it, but I know that competition is always a good thing to push I people agree. to be stronger. Mm-hmm. For all we know, the Smash World Tour could have started in kind of response to BTS kind of taking over these tournaments. Maybe that was something that was planning as a way to like kind of bring themselves back on top i think that's a really good point honestly yeah, i i feel like like they've had this like in the plans like for a long time and just been working on it because ever since bts mass like started picking up like gamer never showed any like like remorse for like bts mass like Picking up all these tournaments because like he didn't like, care. It seemed like, like he had something yeah, on the cards. Like, yeah, like like he didn't tweet anything. He didn't like get which mad. pissed me off. And like, I'm like whenever I saw him, like like he was always grinning, happy bro. as fuck. <laughs> Yo, crazy. that is true. If shit. you have seen Gimmer at a tournament in the last year, this man is eating good or something, bro. He is living life. He looks happy as fuck. I mean, you see Xanadu. Yeah, Xanadu is popping. I've been to Xanadu like three times in the last year. I never went there in Smash Four one time. So like, Damn. I I think I think VG is, is killing it. I think this is gonna help them continue to kill it. And I'm really interested to see if I think this will be so like like you said, you might not go to Big House, right? I'm definitely not going to Big House. Well, right. what if in response to something like this, BTS Smash goes, all right, you know what? We'll throw in 40, 50 k to one of these tournaments. Just to like, kind of like, well, get the top players 50K, to go. If there's a random 50k, of course I'm going. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that this could be a way to, for, I think this could maybe prompt a response from BTS Smash to be like, alright, maybe the tournaments that we do have, we have to kind of raise the excitement level for, by possibly putting up some money or getting some sponsors in there to like, really make sure that the top players still even come. I have an opinion about BTS Smash. I've met with them, I spoke with them, and I think, like, almost every single person I've met from them, they're, they're very smart. Mm-hmm. And from what I heard, they had a lot of good plans. And as you can see, stuff is working out really good for them. And that's why they were taking the events that VG had. Mm-hmm. They were taking them because of their smart power plays. And now VG did this attack, which I feel like this attack reminds me of Super Smash Con. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. You got, I, I, oh, I've been around for so long, so I see it. Yeah. Super Smash Con, they did $30,000 pot. That was unheard of, the first one. Like four or three, four Oh, that's right. That's yeah. unheard of for Smash. So everybody went to it. And be, after that, the next year, they had no... Hot bonus, <laughs> but everybody still went. They were brainwashed Dude, it's like at the Super biggest Smash ever now. Yeah, and the pop bonus made everybody go to the first one, and that's the key thing you have to do. Sometimes you have to get everybody in on the first time, and the next time around, so, you could do so, less. So, are you saying that next Smash World Tour might have like 50k instead? No, I, I don't, don't think, think so. that would happen. I don't think so. But the thing is, though, that VG mm-hmm. is running. What is it? The Super Smash. What is it? What's it called? Smash World Tour. Smash World Tour with the people of Super Smash Con, who are the same people yeah. that put thirty thousand dollars into the first Super Smash Con and every other Smash Con after. There's no fucking pot bonus. They were right, saving right. the pot for this. All right. <laughs> 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 that's crazy. I don't know. That's like that's right. like four years of Smash Here's Con thirty pot, dude. Here's my rebuttal to that. All right, is I. That's an interesting narrative, but in my opinion, it's like. 
the whole this whole Smash World tour is a response to the community's like continuous like cry for help in terms of prize pools. So I think that like that is the main allure of the Smash World tour. I don't think while well, Ultimate is still popping, we know next year is gonna still be popping. I New don't characters. think that there would be anything any any bullshit like that. That would be a huge that that would just everybody would I think the what Smash World Tour was created to have as little backlash as humanly possible. Yeah. That's why they made the Australian tournament platinum. They did everything two, they could. They wanted Leffen to be hype. Two European tournaments. They, they, they put two melee tournaments in They gave in melee and ultimate. Yeah, two yeah, melee two exclusive melee tournaments in Japan, in Japan that have not yeah. been announced what? yet. They, yeah. Japan never has melee tournaments. Yeah. yeah. So, like, obviously... Yeah, they don't care about melee that much. Obviously, like... VG is trying to appease as many humans as possible. I don't think that they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna abuse that power when obviously the getting is has been very good for them. Mm. I, I feel like they. I believe in them to. And also like SmashCon is definitely. I don't know how strong their influence is in this tournament series or not, but I know it's also sponsored by Twitch, also sponsored by Smash GG. Obviously Twitch, you know. And Damn. owned by Amazon. Yo, VG pulled out the cards, dude. I thought, I thought, um, what is it? BTS was gonna win, and I think they still can win. By the way, they could. They definitely still can. I hope they don't personally. Just in my opinion, I do not like. I think they're probably getting better, but I have not liked what I've seen from BTS Smash in terms of production of majors. I don't like the fact that Genesis. Dude, dude, do you remember at Genesis? Do you remember the side stream? Yeah, the side streams were pretty bad. Yeah, and you remember like the actual experience there? How the projector was literally half a screen bent sideways and shit. I, I, I love that, but I don't know what was going on. As soon as I went to, uh, what was that tournament? Frostbite? Who did that? BG <laughs> killed it. Oh my! It that was a what, perfect. It doesn't Smash matter production. what stream I was on. Like it had perfect sound, perfect yes. volume levels. As a commentator, you know. Um, I felt like I was separated from the crowd because before I'd be commentating, people would ask for pictures, and like I'm talking, you know, on the <laughs> mic, like, like I have to focus. I don't look at my phone. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. for someone to ask me for a picture, it's like, god damn it. Yeah, how does that happen? Um, and then like also the thumbnails, the YouTube, just <sighs> many many things about BTS Smash have made me wonder if like. Their money is strong, but their knowledge isn't in terms of like how to run a production. And it's not that I don't believe that they could get better. I mean, but I don't it. want <laughs> I don't want our game to like suffer because of it. Well, I just think uh, BTS Smash. If you do see this, you guys just need to work a little bit more on the side streams. And I will say that it could have been Genesis' fault for that. Not that's very know. possible as well. But whoever was running the side streams at. Was this your first Genesis? Yes. Yeah, like, okay, that's probably why, because last year, like, the side stream was pretty much... The last same. year was BTS Smash, too. Last year was, was VG. Oh, no, it was VG, yeah. you're right. Oh, really? And, and, yeah, and, and the side stream was pretty much just bad. Really? Yeah. Maybe, I, maybe it's Genesis dropping dude, the ball or I, something, but... I just know the headsets were, like, wonky the entire time. I couldn't hear anything correctly. Yeah, it seems <laughs> like... All of them, like, on the stream, on the commentator side, though. Yeah, like, I, I, I just... It just Overall, too, and not just Genesis, but overall, I've been somewhat disappointed by uh, the production I've seen from BTS Smash. But it doesn't I'm not counting them out totally, and I hope to see they have a strong response because I know they have obviously made good business relationships and supported the Smash community in huge ways. So I hope to see a strong response from them in this. But I'm as a VG Bootcamp fanboy since I was first in the scene watching Xanadu every Tuesday. I'm happy to see them come back in and like make a power play. Wait, I want to ask uh, Sylvanas, BTS or VG? VG. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think VG is pretty objectively better right now, but BTS Summit is an amazing event. He, oh he, yeah. He has to be on VG's side because they they, flew they did hire him. Yeah, they didn't I fly mean, him out. Summit, Spire, I just, that, I mean, that's just oh, yeah. Summit hired me. <laughs> yeah. Summit hired me, and I don't know what's up with Gimmer. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, this car flew him out. I don't know what's up with Gimmer. Gimmer hit, hit me up. I, I keep wanting to chop his ass up, man. Yo, I haven't been on Super Smash Con. I haven't been on Pound. Mm. I had to ask for Glitch. Yo, Gimmer, I'm calling you out right now. And I, the thing is, I love Gimmer. I've known him for like 14 years. We've had like falls and whatever. I like stopped hiring him for Katar. Maybe this is revenge. He stopped hiring him for commentary. Damn. I see Gimmer. You lucky I don't need that commentary money. So let's keep going. 
<laughs> All right, well, I think that's a really good transition into our next topic, which uh, I think we'll get into after a shortcut. All right, everybody, we are back after a short intermission. And the next topic I really wanted to get into, and I think uh, it would be interesting to hear your thoughts specifically on this, is the state of commentary in Smash, and more specifically Smash Ultimate, because that's the scene we follow closely. But um, Most commentators don't really want to commentate anymore. Why, why? What makes you say that? Besides, obviously, like revealing. I thought D1 wanted something. to. D1, for some reason, is heavy duty wanting to. Yeah, he's like, let's he's, get into it, boys. He's re inspired. He's, he's, he's not on Twitch anymore. Yeah. He so he said that he wanted to like take his commentary to the next level. I just feel like that's like, like I'm, you know, I don't know exactly how much he made on Twitch, but like, he would have to do commentary for different games. That's what I feel like. Because Smash commentary doesn't pay that much. Sometimes it does, but the thing is, when he was working for Twitch, he used to do Smash commentary anyway, so I, I don't know. I'm not too sure what D1's plan is. Maybe he wants to go to more co events. Um, for me... I think he probably feels like after like he lost his like full-time job and now he doesn't have that sucking his time as hard, yeah. that he really like it like reawakened his passion for commentary, and he wants to like find his purpose in commentary again, Okay, which I, I can see. definitely see that being a thing. I can see that too. I don't want D1 quote tweeting the podcast and saying, actually, it's blah, 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 blah. He always does that quote tweet thing to correct somebody. How's it going, D1, if you see this? Um, <laughs> What's up, Dan? But yeah, uh, I, a lot of commentators like. Come you visit know, us soon. Like, you haven't seen Vicky Kitty around too much. You haven't seen Senpai around too Apparently, much. Apparently, Senpai's making a, a comeback from what she's been saying on Twitter. Oh, yeah. And she hasn't said that before. Okay. So like when she quit or whatever, and then she didn't. I didn't see her say a word about commentary on Twitter. Not reply to no one. Not say nothing. But she's been saying like she apparently might come back. She needs to come back in my opinion. I I, I like. I'm all right. Kitaro knows me. I'm extremely critical of commentary. Like very critical. I thought Senpai was a good commentator. Yes. I yeah. personally didn't think she was quite ready for top eight at Evo. Yes, she was not. But I think she was definitely a very good commentator. Yes. I also don't think Vicky was the right partner to put her with a lot of the time. I didn't think that they bounced off each other very well. But I definitely could see her working with like a more analytical commentator, like yeah. maybe like a Korean Virum, someone like that. And then she kind of has like the more personal flair. Oh, She's geez. funny. Bro, if I ever think of like Anyone that needs a co-commentator, I like always say Korean. Yeah, because Korean, because there's no other Korean in the game. No one else does analytical commentary He's as well as analytical. Him. He could be funny. He could be hype. Korean is like. I'm very underrated. Well, I feel like he's underrated now because people are starting to appreciate him more. Yeah, I think but he's like, definitely starting to get some gas now. He should get more top eights, like to be honest. Yeah, I, I think hopefully we'll continue continue to see that trend. What do you uh? What, what what's your opinion of commentator of commentary is like? Because you don't watch a lot of tournaments, mm -hmm. but when you do, like, who are some of your favorites? I'm curious. Some of my favorites on commentary. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I've kind of been, in a way, like drowning out commentary and like in a way where it just it kind of feels like this it's like this just everybody's just mixed together and they feel they feel like they sound kind of the same yeah. like i feel like there isn't much personality to a lot of the I commentary agree. like even like when i first was watching tournaments my favorite used to be uh like e and tk because mm -hmm. they were just hood Funny. hood ass motherfuckers and you know me but I don't even. They don't. I feel like they don't do the same things they used to do. Like I feel like everybody's kind of like, like esports. Yeah, it's the esports thing. It's weird. I think I don't know. EE -E and TK it just seems like they have some kind of. I don't know. EE -E to a lesser extent, but I feel like EE -E, or TK recently when I watch him, he sounds more jaded about Smash or something. I, I feel like there's always something with those two where it's like there's some kind of business thing getting in the way of their passion. Like maybe they're just not as passionate about. The game or about the scene as they once were but i personally i still love ease commentator commentary i think he's still top three commentator easily um and i hope to see him at more events because i do think he always makes a great show he definitely um, does and tk I, I think tk is still great as well sometimes i wonder how much he cares about the match that he's commentating or like if he still has that same fire but mm. i i hope to see because i do think he's a great commentator and i do like love seeing him succeed but i i don't know i just feel like i haven't seen that same passion recently 
And that's someone that used to watch, because I used to watch every Xanadu and every, like, they, dude, E and TK used to be on every Xanadu, Tuesday Weekly, Top 8, it's, like, killing it and they, shit. Things are more business now um, yeah. than they were before. And I feel like that can affect commentary. So, like, I've commentated with people that people think are the best commentators alive, and they'd literally, like, <laughs> commentate like trash during that one session. And I just felt like this person literally is here right now, right now for the money, yeah. and not... You know, focused on trying to perform a good, good way in a good show. And then the thing is, like, when you commentate well for a long time, people they like basically dick ride the good times. And even if you have a very average or below average session, they don't yeah. know. They're still they'll, gonna like. They'll still like say your name or still sure. want you on the mic or get <laughs> mad if you're not on the mic. And I'm not even trying to single out TKE because I've had times or like you know whoever else I've had times where I felt like wow that was below average and then people are. Oh my god, your commentary is amazing. I'm like, no, it fucking wasn't. But I think I'm really you, critical uh, of my commentary. Say that one time uh, when you flew from Japan to the 2DD tournament and you had um, like two hours of sleep or something. Yes. And you commented Congo on Saga. You you I still can't believe you even went to that. Yeah, I, I remember you. That shit was like. That. I and was then, like, how are you surviving? Yeah, and then you told me that that you were getting DMs right afterwards about how great your, Dude. your commentary was when you were falling asleep on commentary. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Like. Oh my god, you don't know, man. There's I, so much happens behind the scenes. I feel like part of that could be like a product of like people, like commentary not being everyone's main thing anymore. Yes. Because like, I feel like when I hear about like how commentators get paid and things like that, it seems like inconsistent and like nobody wants to put their all into something inconsistent. Contract and, work is tough. Yeah, and so I feel like with the more esports feel, you know, kind of you know, lessening how much they can be have their personality in the commentary and then the fact that there's they're making money in different avenues as opposed to just commentary is making it so that their passion is just moving away from commentary just because their energy is somewhere else. So when their energy is coming to commentary, it's like I've already used my energy streaming or, you know, making these you yeah. said it, you said it perfect. Yeah. What happens is a lot of energy is going into it could be YouTube or streaming or maybe another game they're playing or mm. and all that stuff. And then when it goes, oh by the way, go back to the regular thing that you first became popular and known for and do this. It causes them to like not care as much a lot of times, especially when they do have a bad commentary block and people DM saying, "Yo, you were so amazing." It's like no, yeah, like oh you thought that was amazing. Well, I'm about to do that again. Then I'm about to fuck. <laughs> The fall asleep on commentary thing, I, I can't think of a commentator who has it. Like, really? Here's a question I have for you, personally, because I am curious about what you think about that, or about what you think about this, is how, how do you feel like your commentary's been in the like last year of Ultimate so far? Like, mm, how, yeah. I'm, I'm extremely critical on my commentary, personally. Mm. It's not like I finished doing commentary, I'm like, that was great! Like, uh, most of the time, like... <laughs> Tony the Tiger, like, yes. I most for the bet for me like <laughs> I, I just imagine you getting up. Yo, that was great, bro. <laughs> um, like you're popping off for some reason. I, I haven't commentated that much, but again, I'm very critical. So <laughs> for me, like the best I've done as of recent was probably Frostbite for me mentally. But um, I think you did really good at Frostbite. Yeah, but I, I still see that as like a seven point five or eight out of ten for me. Like I feel like I could have done way better. Like there's some tournaments where. People are like, damn, that shit was amazing. Guitar on D1, the best ever. Like, and those tournaments, those very few, were like 9.5. Mm. So if I have a thing and I'm like, okay, this is pretty good, and people are DMing me, I love that, I love that. I'm like, yeah, it was pretty good, but it could have been, it could have been better. I just, I just, oh. I think like Frostbite 2018, or 2017, I think. Whatever, zero Frostbite versus was zero for a suit. That was definitely like that your was like, best commentary That was ever. like peak right there. Yeah. Dude. Oh my God. God, I had the best sets to commentate, and it's just, oh, the jokes are coming, man. Yeah, that, that <laughs> whole... <laughs> when, when you and D1 does not catch one of these, yo, that shit pissed me off. Bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that was actually a really good one, too. You know what, Frostbite, I, I always have pretty damn good commentary. Frostbite's always yeah, good. Yeah, it's, it's always Frostbite. Yeah, yeah, always Frostbite, but it's also the one of the only tournaments that gives me the opportunity to show myself, so... I agree, yeah. I think it's weird how you've been kind of excluded from a lot of these big majors it's questionable to me because i 
Because as someone, like, even if I didn't really know you, mm -hmm. looking from the outside in, it's... All right, everybody, had a quick technical difficulty, as is customary here on the Love Podcast. But anyways, getting back on topic, basically what I was saying before was, as someone, like, even if I didn't know you, if I was an outsider looking in on the scene, I would be very confused why the person with 10 years plus of experience who has, like, been a fan favorite for years and has been a, and is, is, is available... Uh, isn't getting hired for more of these tournaments. That's when uh, there are people that I find very questionable. I'm not going to... I don't know. I don't want to uh, start some shit. It's the politics, dude. Um, that's one of the reasons why I also don't want to commentate as much either. The politics are annoying. When you know or feel that you should be picked for stuff and you're not getting picked, um, whether it's they pick somebody else because they could pay them uh, way cheaper because it's people that will take pennies or no... Or, they will pay to commentate. <laughs> yeah, so then that's why a lot of events just have bad commentary because they yeah. pick those people as, so the TOs can make more money. A lot of TOs say, act like they, they die running tournaments. I was a TO for like seven fucking years. I know it's hard as shit, but don't act like you don't profit mad money randomly. Sometimes you might not, but there, like if some if a TO takes home 20K, I wouldn't be shocked. If, so. it's your for, if it's your fourth year running an annual major and you're telling me that you haven't found a way to make it profitable by now or like you're running it at a loss every single year, I just... TOs, TOs since the beginning of time <laughs> like to act like they don't make money and they just fight for life, but they do make money. But I will say TOs are treated like shit. I That's agree. why I don't want to be a TO. I don't give a fuck if I could make $20,000 for running a tournament. I do not want to do it that. It is an extremely with the potential backlash. Job, really. And the met like trying to run a tournament is like the hardest thing I probably have ever done in my life. Dude, the most really? stressful shit. <clears throat> I wake up and think about the tournament. I take a piss, I think it's about to, I take a shit, I think about the tournament. <laughs> I'm planning for my Qatar <laughs> tournament six months in advance every single day. Yeah. And my life immediately feels better. When the tournament's over, until yeah. somebody says their pool started 10 minutes late. <laughs> and then if I have to run another tournament next year, I'm already thinking about it. Oh my God, it's like having a child, dude, I swear. It's well, annoying as fuck. We're gonna have to, because you know, we still have to do the summit in 10 minutes from like last year. I ain't running that shit. <laughs> there, there's gonna be a K Tar, but I'm not doing anything. But besides that, Excalibur gonna show up here and murder you. <laughs> I'm ready you for don't it. Get his Excalibur. All right, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank Anyways, you for that very oh, insightful oh no i want to say one more thing please do there's a lot of politics um there's people that may or may not want to work with me there's people could be grimy about what happened in the past um there's a i'm just i'm not gonna say name but there's a commentator that's top commentator that simply will not utter a, a word to me due to stuff that happened in the past mm -hmm. so because of that you know that commentator might be like i don't want to work with k -Tarl. Or somebody salty about something from the past, whatever bullshit. And maybe that he was that tournament's big hire. So yeah, exactly. So then I can't work with that guy. Yeah. So literally, I can't work with that guy or girl. So now it's like, I I can't be at that tournament. You know what this conversation is kind of making me realize is maybe this is a big reason for the loss of passion for a lot of people too is the politics. Like the politics. Maybe are they just feel like they're constantly getting undercut, and so that's pissing them off. So like. When they do get hired for a tournament, they're not as passionate because they know that they're not going to get this one tournament that they really want because it doesn't matter what because it's like either they fuck over their other commentators who know what they deserve or they're just going to get undercut again by the same dudes who everybody don't like listening to. No shots, no shots. Anyways, uh, yeah, I think the politics of commentary it's annoying. has it's probably annoying. like hurt the integrity of commentary a lot. It did, and, and the thing for me is like, I know a lot of people want to see me on more, but I'm not sitting there striving or fighting to jump on more commentary. There's other people who yeah. are fighting and striving and who are really good. And a, the example is the same one that we just spoke about. Yeah, Korean. Korean. Yeah. So if anything, like if I just stopped commentating and Korean took over, like so fucking be it. I'd be happy for him because he's at least a commentator where he doesn't have the past of like he has a politics keeping him behind, like at least below me when it comes to getting spots. But he doesn't have like. The past of stuff like, I don't know, fucking causing... In, in the community since you were fucking 18 years old. Yeah, <laughs> and I want to make like, you know, I'm trying to live off of like Smash and gaming. So commentary with the politics, it's like, I'll do it when, when it seems like about right. But a lot of times I just will say, screw it. Oh, 
You picking that person? All right, bye. Oh, you want to pay me two pennies? All right, bye. Like, I'm nah. I will. I will stay at home. I'll stream. You know, I'm sponsored. Like, I'll do other things. I'll go on TV. All right. <laughs> I'll go to Nairo's house. Soft like, flex. Like, I'm not even trying to flex. I'm just being straight, real. Like, you know. You, you'd rather focus on your own content where you yes. can control and the control. variables and shit. Yeah. If I want to stream right now, I can walk out of here and stream and like, you know, do stuff. But commentary, it's like, mm, 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 mm. no, I'm good. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> that's the tos dude that's the tos that's the the streamers you know that's the the disney channel effect where they pick up d1 tk and ee and they say oh we had enough black people so katara gets the bypass let's pick up a fucking a, a girl um a dude from um iraq and a fucking polar bear and put them on commentary over katara because it's too many fucking black people i call it the disney channel commentary effect fuck that shit i'll just do my own stuff i definitely think that uh, there is a lot of identity politics in commentary. I've seen it time and time again where it doesn't feel like the most deserving people are getting it. And they're looking to have as much representation of every possible thing they can have when in reality 99.9% of the viewers just want to hear good commentary the over the matches. No, there's some, there's some Cody. I'll play, I'll play Cody. 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 Okay, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. I, Cody, I love yeah. Cody so Cody much. Korean. I love Coney. Coney and Korean are definitely like the two best non-black commentators. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I don't know, man. All I know is that TLs, I get it. It's 2020. You're worried someone's going to cancel you. Someone Inclusion is important. I get it. I get it. I get it. But God damn, we just want to hear good commentary over the game we love, man. That's all I really have to say. Like, if... If 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 the if even the white person says he wants to hear the black commentators, like you know it's a big deal. I just want to hear good smash commentary, man. I'm tired of this shit. Anyways, I do have one more topic I want to talk about to this man right here. So it's been you know a thing uh, on your mind for a while. I can definitely tell. And then after frostbite, it seems like it kind of solidified your decision. Oh, but, uh, yeah, I dropped inkling. Yeah. Cos- yeah, I dropped Inkling. I'm mainly Pikachu now. Why? Um, because Pikachu's the best character in the game. Do you think Pikachu's the best character in the yeah, game? I still think I still think Inkling's a top five character. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. Um, I just don't think that the character fits my play style. Okay. So I went the, I guess, campier, more options route and picked Pikachu because Pikachu has an option for every... Has options... For mm-hmm. every single situation, and um, she's just the best character <coughs> in the game. And since I want to be the best player in the game, why aren't I playing the best character? Yeah, I think that's definitely a real thing. But there is one specific aspect of this that I want to talk to you about. Because I have felt this before on a smaller scale, obviously, because you have so many more eyes on you. But when I like initially was thinking about dropping Young Link and like maining Roy or whatever, one of the big things that held me back for a long time was that like I didn't want... The majority of my fan base were fans of me because I was the Young Link player. I was the dude who, when Tweet quit Young Link, it was like, everyone was like, all right, studying my VODs and all this shit and like being in my stream and calling him one sip and the Young Link emo and all this shit. I'm like, yo, dude, I, I'm like, I can't fucking, I can't drop this character. This character is like part of my identity. Yeah. Did you struggle with, with that as well? Of course. I mean, that's, I've... Or are I, you, I, I, I kind of said it before, but that's that's the like I've wanted to drop. I've been thinking at least uh, about dropping Inkling since like Evo. S- not Evo. Was it Evo? It was. It was August. Picked, August. That's when you started. Yeah. That's. It, it, it was either Evo or Smash Con. I think it was right in between. No, it was so. main stage. It, it it was main stage. So it was mm. late September. So it's 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 been like. A you were definitely playing months. Joker when the first yeah when we first came here. It was it was a long time back, but the only reason why I kept playing Inkling is because I felt like um, I don't only play for myself; I play for my fans too. Yeah. But I feel like that was holding me back, and I was like, "Well, I'm, I'm gonna just have to hold this hit because I actually felt like if I dropped Inkling, like no one would care about watching me anymore." But yeah. I mean. Today, it's, I went live, I played Pikachu, I had 700 viewers, and yeah. who cares? <laughs> no, dude, you learn quick that it's like, 
people, even if they initially became your fan because they wanted to see an inkling or whatever, like, I mean, people not were just definitely, be... like, still upset. Oh, yeah, no. Like, people people are I, I made that tweet, and, like, I instantly got, like, 100 comments of people. Dude, I upset. hear it. I, I literally, every day I've turned on my stream since you made that tweet, I've had some, I've had, like, four or five people, like, what's your opinion on Cosmos dropping inkling? Do you think Pikachu is good fit for Cosmos? Bro, like, all this, people, I'm like, God damn. There are people that, there are inkling mains that come in my chat that tell me that they have friends that ask them. Uh, if they're gonna switch to Pikachu because I switched to Inkling. Like, oh, Bro, I heard I saw pictures of like the Inkling Discord and shambles and shit. They're like they're like fuck everything, fuck life and all this shit. <laughs> Bro, they got space, kidding, man. Bro. They got space. Yo, I mean space. even even Armada I, I know like Arm, Arm, like he Did you watch that video he made yeah, today? Yeah. He he says that he still mains Inkling and he's just playing Pokemon Turn on Wi Fi, but I know how it he is. Bro. Because even I like recently I've I've been saying that that you know I'm still gonna keep Inkling as a secondary and like I'm I'm a co main, but realistically bro, I'm I'm a Pikachu main. If now. you fight Snake, if you if fight, I fight Nairo. Snake if I fight Snake if I fight Nara, if I fight Snake, even if I lose game one, I'm still going Inkling. If I fight Nara, I'm going game. I'm going Inkling game one. If I fight Ness, I'm going Inkling. If See, I here's... fight any, if I fight any character that I've never <coughs> lost, lost to as Inkling, I'm going Inkling. So you don't, you didn't drop Inkling. You, you have a secondary. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm secondary Inkling. I'm not like, so you uh, say, okay. I'm, I'm not like a huge like co-main because I'm yeah. still mainly going Pikachu. Yeah. If, if I play pools like. And I don't but what know if you fight? What if you go to the tournament and like all your prominent matches are states? You know, it's, or an, an, matches it's, it's, never... it's, it's, it's an equally tournament, bro. Right. But I feel like that makes you a co main. Yo, at that twenty thousand dollar tournament, why did you go all inkling? That was that was my inkling send off tournament. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was that's actually what I said it was. <laughs> you're, you're definitely a co main. Yeah, and then you if you're gonna own. if you have specific characters that you're gonna fight. Inkling, like if you say, "Oh, in this situation, I'm using Inkling." I'm using well, I mean, inkling. that's what a secondary does. Yeah, that's, a, that's a secondary. Well, it's just, it's the same. is like Coleman, I literally Coleman is play like, like half and half. Yeah, I literally play Roy mm. for like half the matchups. Youngling for half, like yeah. pretty damn. Coleman's like half and half, 40, 60, maybe 30, 70. Inkling, I'm using it in like very specific. Very Although specific I do predict specific. that as time goes on, you will. Cause it's like I think you're you gonna put use in, the character half and half because you're gonna yeah. fight so many matchups that it's gonna be good for Inkling that you think that you should play Inkling that you're gonna go half and half. I but, I don't think so because I just think in the matchups that Inkling is good. They in don't really just better. Yeah, I don't really yeah. feel like they like don't. Is there is there like any match? I mean, they like, both I'm, barely I'm lose any fucking matchups yeah, in the first exactly. place. I'm so. very comfortable in the Roy Inkling matchup, but. I just think Pikachu oh, does, does better. Should, yes, I agree. I'm comfortable in the Young Link Inkling matchup, but I'm probably still going to go Pikachu. I'm I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm comfortable in the That's pretty um, insane. Mario Inkling matchup, but I'm probably going to go Pikachu. Mm. Just because I, I just think, like, Pikachu is just <laughs> broken. And mm. he's like, I, I think Inkling is one of the only characters that beats Joker, but I think Pikachu beats Joker also, harder. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree Pikachu's, with that. Pikachu's just broken. Short piece okay. of shit, man. Yeah. yeah. Multi hit. Has a bro. He's crazy, crazy in this yes. game. Yes, Pikachu is the best. Character you know what's funny is uh, this always happens to me, and I honestly at this point I'm done letting this happen to me. But I, before I was like, yo, Inkling best in the game. Joker is really good too, and I'm like Pikachu. I think he overrated. And then Cosmo start playing. P or like first I thought Joker was overrated. Then he started playing Joker. I'm like Joker <laughs> broken. <laughs> and then now he start playing Pikachu. I'm like, all right, this motherfucker is not overrated. This dude is a menace. Pikachu is literally like, I I am still like flabbergasted at how he has that spike. You remember how I used to say all the time that Inkling was designed to be the perfect competitive character? Yeah. I think that's what Pikachu was actually that's, designed to be. That's Pikachu and Joker. Yeah, I think I think that's why they're the top three yeah. in my Pikachu, opinion. Pikachu, Joker, and e even though I I don't think Palutena is top five, but I think Palutena is. Like the perfect design competitive character. She is also like I feel like there's some characters when you look at it, they are just so obviously designed to be yeah. great in like, competitive play. Like come on, like bro, like Wolf. Dude, like, yeah. on, bro, like you have a Wolf is not you, it's like the least casual character ever. You have a transcendent laser that goes through every projectile. You have sword aerials, yeah. Joker has to be the number one though. 
Joker is definitely the number one. Bro, if you give favorite. a casual Joker, they're not going to be able to do shit. They're going to be short hop, fairing in place. They're not going to know what the fuck to do. But you put that in the hands of Leo and like watch him not lose a tournament. I feel like that character was... I, I, I just love the character design in this Like, game. dude, I, I recently like noticed like Sam, like at the tournaments he's been going to recently, he's always been doing he's well. Been doing dude, good he, as like, fuck. Figured, he like figured it out. Yeah. He figured out why people like he's been saying pg 2s busted, but he figured out why. Didn't he get like fourth at Genesis? He got fourth at fourth at Genesis and third at Glitch, dude. He's been fucking people up, dude. <laughs> and now he's conveniently uh, you yeah. know taking a now two month break, break or whatever. He's, 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 I know he's getting married. I know, I know. I, I, I'm, I'm just fuck, I'm fucking around, yeah. but. On a on a real note though, he's but pulling I, the dark dude, I, right I, now. And I will admit, I I will admit, I had not, I had risk, I had respect for Esam, but I had not as much because I did think he he was carried. Mm-hmm. But, but <laughs> now I'm playing Pikachu, and I'm like, it's all right, pretty hard props because that character is hard as fuck to play. Someone <laughs> in my stream today asked me, they're like, do you think Sheik is the hardest character in the game? And I was like, uh, I think I I mean I think Sheik is Sheik really hard, but one. like. Neutral is not that hard with her because she has fair, nair, f tilt, down tilt. She has confirms that kill percent like more than one. I think Pikachu is pretty fucking hard. Yeah. Because like, it's, especially for me, like, like I I know I'm a smart player. I'm a good player. I can do pretty much anything in the game. But for like the past like three years, I've been playing the game on easy mode because because I played Smash Four Coin for two years, mm. which is just pin reset. And I played Inkling for the past year, which is just back here, dash back, re- reset, grab, mm. combo, I'm yeah. good. But now I'm playing Pikachu, and I literally feel the the gears turning in my head every interaction I'm playing. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's exciting, too. So cause... are you saying when you use Inkling, you weren't using your brain? Yes. That makes me even more mad that you <laughs> have to not use your brain and you have to use it to an extent. That's bring me that much pain. <laughs> There's a reason the other inklings weren't placing like you. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely like think, but it's there. You you have a very flow chart game plan, which yeah. is also why people beat inkling a lot. Because if you know what the flow chart game plan is, you are going to know what to do to avoid it. So if you know what to do to avoid it, then Inkling struggles a lot. I definitely but, think at top level, yeah. yes. the character falls apart a little bit. But Pikachu Pikachu has 70 different flow charts that you can pick and like change, like interchange between. So you never know what Pikachu is actually going to go for. I don't think there's a single top player that you could ask that wouldn't tell you that they, that they hate fighting Pikachu. Yo, you you Sam looks like he just goes at your face. He just jumps in your face he, and presses. He does, but a then randomly, randomly he just stops and just throws out Smash seventy. Attacks. That and then he just stops and then throws out thirty T jolts and then goes oh, back yeah. in your face True. for another forty five seconds. Oh. Like, cause, cause that's what Pikachu can do. Pikachu can just choose what he wants to do. He can. He literally has all the freedom in the world. He can. He can be like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna circle yeah. camp you under the like, stage. If, if, I can if, just if fucking... you want to talk about a character that is controlling the game, Pikachu is controlling Smash Bros. That's why, dude. That's that's literally why. That's literally why in the fucking Smash opening scene at the end, Pikachu is like there, the main standing, character, staring at just he's Wait, the main you know he's fucking character. About? You know the cin- opening cinematic of the game and how in the very last scene it's like all of a sudden for no ran- no apparent reason <laughs> it's, it's like just the Pikachu. Turning okay, and like, it's like, like all the stages are it's like transitioning in like five different stages and Pikachu is just standing there <laughs> like, like oh yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Because Pikachu is fucking broken. I have a boring answer. You might have like the best 3D model, like the best model to just be in that position. Because I know a lot of them, huh? And he's short too. Yeah, because a lot of the characters are not really meant to be seen like from behind. Because he's just a ball. Kirby boring. But he's also the main character of the story mode. Yeah. Yeah, he might be wide as shit though when he's. Because I, I remember in the last game, <laughs> when I would look at the Call characters Pikachu 3D, fat, bro. Ugh. Pikachu is a little, he's a little. He's a little. He's a little fat. But yeah, that's what makes yeah. him cute. He's like a cat. Dude, Pikachu is like Sayu if he was in Smash. All right. Anyways, I think that's a perfect place to go ahead and wrap up this podcast. We didn't even talk about the Goblin. Yeah, we've been going for about an hour and 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. We're supposed oh, to go for God. an hour. Uh, but, you know, it's all good. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys all for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
Uh, you know, we're not always going to get to every topic that we want to, but, you know, I think the conversation flowed in a very good direction, and I had a good time on this one. This was definitely the most smash-heavy yes. podcast we've done, but there's just been so much good stuff to talk about in Smash recently that I think has definitely worked out. You okay? Yeah, you look like you almost just died. <laughs> all right. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, make sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. This is where the podcast is going to be uploaded ideally every week. We're going to try our best. This dude's going leaving for a month. A month, yeah. Yeah, he's going to be gone for a month. So, you know, maybe we'll fly to Mexico to record the next one. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you guys next time. You know, <laughs>